Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to the Olympic story. Yes, and today our story has reached a point where we shall be diving deep into the deeper waters. And of course, if you have not still understood my analogy, then of course or metaphor, I am of course talking about the beautiful sport of swimming. Yes, we all have experienced, we've all have taken a dive, we've all taken a plunge. But uh as far as we as a swimming nation is concerned uh, we are still i believe struggling on the international stage uh, but there's always hope and there's always positivity and that's the only thing that sport teaches us and today i have with me who uh, a gentleman who's an olympian himself uh, who has done wonderfully well when he competed at the 2000 sydney games uh, he is somebody who has uh, really contributed a lot to the sport even while he was not swimming later on in his years he has uh, established a company which is supporting this cause uh, and i'm of course talking about the one the only mr habib allah welcome to the show sir thank you very much thank you for having me and uh, yeah lo- really looking forward to chatting with you talking about Yep, yep. I I I hope that you are doing first and foremost very important for me to ask in these times that your family and you are doing wonderfully well everything is good. Uh that yes. would be nice. Yes, we've been fortunate. I think you know we have counting our blessings. Uh the immediate family has been safe and comfortable during these times. Uh we are, we also have had uh, extended family and friends who've been impacted. but i guess that's the case with majority of us uh, you know across the country and uh, we have to still pay attention as we move forward on uh, when we're talking about everyone staying safe absolutely sir and i'm sure they would have recovered everything is fine and moving forward uh, we we remain that way so welcome to the show uh, it's the olympic story sir we of course are today uh, going to be focusing uh very specifically on swimming a sport which you've enjoyed which you've loved which you've represented the country uh at the olympics and at the highest levels so just first things first uh swimming has been uh a sport where very recently we had a quote from uh, the head of the federation where he did uh, go ahead and say something which i thought was very honest uh and would help uh, as we progress because at least we are accepting and embracing that fact he ended up saying that we are 20 years behind in terms of our standards uh as compared to the counterparts at the international level so uh of course that's a yawning gap but uh you being a gentleman who is very uh deeply involved with this how do you think uh, are we progressing in terms of uh, things to improve in the near future Well to begin with let me uh, let me say that you know if you're talking about us being 20 years behind um I think that's still an optimistic statement because if I have to oh, be wow. really hard and and look deeper I would say we're possibly closer to being 40 years behind the, you know some wow. of the top countries That being said the good news is that um it does it you know I don't think it's going to take us 40 years to catch up with the rest of the world mm-hmm. uh with what we have today with what we you know the way things have begun to change the kind of support that has begun to come swimming's way i do believe that uh, you know over the next uh 10 years we have the opportunity to catch up with many of the, but to do that uh you know there will have to be a significant amount of attention given to swimming and uh, to put it uh, you know in perspective why is swimming important you know why yeah. should swimming be given the attention uh let's put some numbers uh, at play so uh i'm talking about swimming here i'm not even talking about aquatic sports so sure. put, let's okay let us let me give you an umbrella picture so aquatic sports mm-hmm. uh itself at, at these games at tokyo have the highest number of medals at stake so we're talking about mm-hmm. 49 gold medals in aquatic wow. sports now that is one more than athletics which has 48 wow. what are the sports that are uh, under the aquatic umbrella we've got uh swimming diving water polo artistic swimming and open water swimming so we've got these five sports under the um, aquatic sports umbrella of which 37 gold medals out of the 49 are in swimming itself 
of which 35 in the pool and two in open water. So to just, I mean, you know, and and uh, so this is one perspective. What does this mean in compared to the total number of medals at stake? We have about 330 odd medals at stake. It means 10% of the gold medals at stake are in the pool. Wow. And that's a significant amount. When you're talking about uh, overall 33 sports, 50 disciplines in the, at the Olympics, and then you look at only one of them, only one of the disciplines contributing to 10% of the gold medals, that first of all is, is one key point of attention. Now, uh, that's one of the fundamentals on why swimming is important. And plus, you also look at it in the context that when you talk about ROI, you know, return on investment on an athlete, uh, swimming gives you the maximum ROI because you, you, swimming is a sport where one good athlete can win you multiple medals. So compared to, um, you know, a, a team sport where you would need uh, more than 10 to 15 athletes to get you one medal. So swimming that way does also contribute uh, in that. And, and examples of, uh, you know, swimmers winning multiple medals at these games itself. A big famous name that uh, won multiple medals in the past, Michael Phelps. Uh, when yes. you know he did, he won the historic eight individual gold medals, I mean eight medals, uh, five of them were individual gold medals. So an yeah. example that often I share is uh, at the at the Beijing Olympic Games where India won its first and so far and hopefully not uh, you know we'll break the jinx these games. But the, our first Olympic gold medal with Abhinav in the individual sport with Abhinav Indra, uh, we we ended up number fifty one on the medal table. So. Sure. Uh, with the one gold and two bronze medals, if we had only one Michael Phelps representing India, <laughs> with his with his five individual gold medals, we would jump from number fifty-one to number fifteen on the medal table. Wow! So, so to just put in context of wh how one super athlete, you know, and which India has the potential for as well, uh, can completely change our status on the medal table. So these are just few uh, starting references of why that's, that's... swimming needs attention. And why, uh, you know, we need uh, a lot more attention. Now, just, uh, you know, go back one step beyond swimming and saying, why should people engage with water? Uh, because when we looked at the larger picture, we also realized that people, if they're enjoying, if they enjoy swimming and they enjoy engaging with the water safely, uh, there are more sports connected with water open to them. So when you look sure. at the larger picture beyond aquatic sports, you realize uh, when you add triathlon, modern, I mean, you know, modern pentathlon and then surfing, sailing, kayaking, canoeing, as an example of other sports, you realize that uh, they're close to now 100 gold medals at stake at the Olympic Games, which then is wow. contributing to uh, almost a third of the gold medals at stake. So, so then when you, you know, just to paint the big picture for you and why we urgently need to pump in resources and attention to um, building that larger culture uh, with water. And, uh, and then of course, uh, you know, a focus on swimming. A small, Amazing. just to close it out, sure, uh, sure, you sure. know, the, the, um, the United States swimming team at the Rio Olympic Games, uh, only, only about 40 of them, 40 plus swimmers of the US Olympic team uh, won 16 gold medals and 33 medals overall in the pool. Wow. Now, if you, now, if you, now, if USC swimming with just those 40 swimmers were a country by themselves at Rio, they would have been number six on the medal table. So, so just some numbers, you know, just to <laughs> put in context on why, uh, trust you know, me, we, trust <laughs> me, sir, you have definitely grabbed our attention and how, I mean, with those kind of numbers. And of course, I still remember that image of uh, Phelps ha uh, had, uh, I mean, with those medals around his neck, he, he looked like uh, the man who was representing the East side with that kind of blinging hang around his neck. I mean, yeah, I, I can completely understand, but, uh, to further uh, expand on what you were saying, uh, what do I want to understand when you say you want to pump in resources, uh, you want to bring in, you know, it's needed, much needed. And of course, uh, the way you have put across the numbers, I think we should jump onto that train as soon as possible. Uh, you're talking about also the aspect of science and technology coming into this sport because I believe uh, that is something which is still a miss. Uh, as far as uh, the sport of uh, swimming is concerned, or probably the aquatic sports on a pool. So, you know, I would just save the sports science part of it um, mm -hmm. to the second part of the discussion. But coming to, I think we need, 
a lot of the fundamentals to be put in place much earlier okay. and by that i mean you know it's about how do we create the spaces the infrastructure as well as the support elements around the infrastructure in terms of the quality of people that help people across diverse backgrounds whether it's a toddler or a grandparent in the family okay. to enjoy engaging with water so from a leisure perspective to begin with i think that's one critical aspect that's been missing in introducing to the introducing everyone to the water in a safe fun environment that you know once we we need we need a that's a critical gap that needs attention if you want literally every person in this country to enjoy engaging with water once we build the base of the pyramid then you start talking about the next level of uh, infrastructure that needs to come in and and when i say infrastructure and resources human resources that need to come in to then help the people who enjoy engaging with water to then learn the right skills from a formal learn to swim program over many years and then you know come to the next phase you know once people have the foundation skills and enjoy engaging with the water when they want to take it to the next level in the next competitive level that's where the you know the sports sciences come into play you know play a greater role mind you that said uh, you know even in the teaching process the whole science part is very important but we're talking about fundamentals here we're talking about how does the teacher oh, yeah. understand you know the yeah. sciences around how the body floats in the water sure. how a body sure. moves in water propulsion resistance all these fundamentals are very important at an early stage but mm-hmm. then when you get to the next level of competitive sport uh, you know the level of detail goes to a whole different level where it swimming is a sport sure. where we've seen medals uh, even here in tokyo being won and lost by 0.01 of a second yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. and and to help the viewers understand what that means you know you're talking about uh, 0.01 being less than uh 2 cm you know so wow it's very it's extremely difficult to you know find out who won the race with the naked eye you need electronic timing systems to differentiate sure. that but uh you know when you're talking about those level of detailing then it counts when it you know the hydrodynamic elements around how your body is streamlined in the water uh sure. how do you increase your propulsion decrease resistance goes to a whole different level of detail and um, and that's where yes there is still significant room and attention required uh towards building those levels of um, uh, support systems i right. feel in general um it will be it's very important for the coaches to understand and have a strong background or understanding in sports sciences because uh, today uh, even for inputs to come in from the support staff whether they are strength and conditioning experts or psychologists it becomes very important for them to uh assimilate and then um, uh, use that information to transform that to performances in the fair enough but of course i i i must tell you this sir uh, it's 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 really wonderful the way uh, you are uh, describing each and every aspect you know you're shedding so much of beautiful light on it i was almost forced to take notes while you were talking it reminded me of the master class and i was like okay wait uh, i have to write this down but uh, with that sort of knowledge going forward i think it's definitely going to benefit the sport but let's get right into the contingent i mean the contingent which has uh, gone for the 2020 olympics uh, we are talking about sajan prakash who is uh, still there we have hope in terms of uh, his uh, particular event uh, women's event we have uh, mana patel who is at the 100 meter backstroke and uh, then we have shrihari natraj who is again at the 100 meter backstroke so I, i would really like you to sir uh, talk about uh, the uh, you know the the players who've gone there the swimmers who've gone there uh what kind of uh, a preparation level do you think uh comes into the picture especially when you're moving to such an elite stage which is the olympics you have done this before you're an olympian so what what would have been that entire uh, method with which they would have gone into this So let's look at it in two parts of the journey. The first part of the journey you know is in a non-covid time period. So for yes. when I had the opportunity to swim I didn't have to deal with this whole different level of distraction that uh, the pandemic has thrown to many of the athletes. So that itself is usually a four year journey at minimum. You know there's a lot of detailing planning because uh, it's about um, you know being ready when the qualification window opens. to start getting into contention to to qualify for the olympics 
and 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 that itself for where we are today is a very important phase and often goes down to the wire to the last month literally or the last few days mm. before the olympics begins when the teams are announced mm. so that itself is a massive part of the lead up journey and then get to the olympics uh, you know then it's the it's the next set of uh, you know battle of bringing yourself back into shape uh, in mm-hmm. a short time often to perform at the highest stage mm-hmm. now you know when you're looking at both uh, sajin and shrihari to begin with yeah. i think yeah. i think both of them have the up fabulous talents uh, you have someone like sajin who made it through the universality uh, you know uh, position in yes. um, at the rio olympic games mm-hmm. but uh, you know has been a phenomenal talent who just wanted to push it to a whole different level and mind you for us at where we are uh, the challenge was to achieve the a qualifying time for the audience that you know needs to understand this the a qualifying time is a extremely high standard it's almost a semi final time at the olympic games and uh, you know it's not an easy uh, time to, the, to achieve mm-hmm. that's the reason why no indian had achieved it till uh both of them landed up doing it literally in the last competition in lead up to it right and then you throw the spin of the whole pandemic i think um you know uh, it really created a lot of uh, unknowns and when we saw how things came down to the wire both sajin and shrihari literally qualified and breached that barrier uh yep. you know in the last days that, now that being said that has set us up well for our future because now with two swimmers we know that we are now well on our way uh, a qualifying times are no longer the roadblock uh, we have the potential and possibilities to achieve that hopefully more consistently as we move forward because we saw that with the b qualifyings in the past uh, uh-huh. the numbers kept growing and uh-huh. i think with what both uh, sajin and shrihari have done they've done, you know they really set the benchmark high coming to the olympics it's extremely difficult for again people just for people to understand it's extremely under, uh, difficult for athletes to you know uh, after a very uh, high level uh, mental and physical pressure situation to get to the a qualifying time and earn that ticket to tokyo it's extremely difficult to then uh, come back to peak performance in less than a month so i feel uh, the swimmers both uh, shrihari and sajin having swum their main events already I actually, sorry sorry have done I actually, well. yeah i i just wanted to add here uh, habibul aji which is that uh, usually the general perception of the audience the general perception of the people watching as a country in terms of the sport it's always like are yaar position nahi mili you know first second third nahi hua are yaar you know like that and and we kind of say oh ho ye to hona hi tha of of sorts and we move on and we say chalo agle saal dekhte ya agle bari dekhte hai kya hoga ya you know like that that is the general sort of a mindset but it would be nice for you to actually say uh, the reason i'm asking you the reason why i sorry i interjected was because you did make that point that we have done well from the past we did not know about it as probably as a nation there is not no more b qualifying times it's now a qualifying time so how would you say in terms of that ha, uh, has has changed for the rest of the people perceiving the sport because i think that's also very important apart from obviously the federation the swimmers the interest i think just as a nation for us to start to feel proud that yes there is progress being made so there like uh, you know again adding to my point there has been a significant amount of progress being made you know and i must give credit uh, you know to the federation as well as the uh, government who really stepped up have begun to step up to uh, take swimming more seriously and take it to the next level uh-huh. Uh-huh. uh to put it in context of these games itself uh, shri hari in the 100 meter backstroke uh, you know when we look at the numbers we we would say that you, just if i mean we all would like our athletes to always do better and i know yeah. it's always easy to to map it to a medal uh, yeah. but but as we become a more knowledgeable audience and we mm. start appreciating the quality of the performances rather than mm. superficially looking at whether did we win a medal or not i think that's an important part of our overall journey you know where the audience needs to be educated and the audience needs to start you know paying attention to the qualitative aspects if people pay attention i'm sure they will start appreciating alongside me that uh, the indian swimmers have already begun doing very really well and what is what is opened up now um, is that the next step towards uh, both paris and la 2028 uh, 
uh, is now the, how many more swimmers make the a qualifying and and those who are making the a qualifying how can they get closer now to the podium now uh-huh. that's the only thing left now for india to focus on is it going to be easy not at all <laughs> not at yeah. all and you know uh, it's not an automatic thing that you know we'll all these doors open up but um, it means that we you know the question marks around do, do we have the talent and the ability i think that has been answered so so now it's only a matter of uh, pumping in a bit more to increase the base and foundations and depth um, and i strongly believe uh, with what where we are today we will be in a in medal contention definitely by la 28 we have an outside chance in paris as well uh, with some of the young talent already in the pipeline but uh, i'm i'm more bullish around la 28 where we will have talent to, uh, you know pushing for medals that's amazing honestly that is actually very encouraging to hear a vibology because uh, obviously uh, you you answered my 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 question before i even asked it so uh, kudos to you on that one you get 100 points so <laughs> yeah because i was i was going to i was going to talk to you about that basically which was the fact that you know every sport has burst onto the scene uh in india you know we we lagged behind in a lot of sports and we've had a lot of them which have burst on the scene uh and i was going to ask you when do you see that happening for swimming and you did so right right away which was the fact that la 28 and yes fingers crossed i'm sure we're going to do well uh just before i but, I, but I, mind I, you but mind you when i say that i must say that it, it you know it it means that we have to get our act towards it from today oh yeah for sure you know we, we because we don't have to wake up um, a month before or a few months before so okay. if we, we we've got a good foundation today and we need to start putting in the resources towards to LA 28 from today every day matters Fair enough every day matters and of course the way uh, you have uh, you know summarized uh, what we need to do and what we need to do going forward i'm pretty sure uh, gentlemen like you will be making sure that we do achieve that goal of uh, LA 28 yes So before before I let you go sir uh I would definitely like uh, for you to give a message to one the contingent at large at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics I would say to every athlete who's part of the Indian team um, you know I know you've worked very hard to be there so you know make sure that you just perform your best enjoy your performance enjoy the atmosphere I know all of us want medals and would love to celebrate the medals uh but uh, it's more important that you stay happy you stay calm and you enjoy the the process and i'm sure with the hard work you've done you, if you just stay calm and enjoy it you will make a strong uh a, you know a strong presence and a strong uh, position and hopefully more medals uh over the next few days but um you know for sajan a special call out i know he's someone who's one of the hardest working swimmers uh and um you know i would tell him as well all of us who understand swimming are proud of what you've done you know and uh, avoid the noise uh, outside beautiful that is actually beautiful almost poetic of you like and uh, of course i just want to say this to you it has been uh, an honor to have you on the show it's been very educational to have you on the show and also very encouraging and inspirational and of course uh, for all of you guys who have been watching uh, that's what we try to do with the olympic story we try to create memories for lifetime and create them with a lot of inspiration and positivity and that happens why because it's powered by sports at the and of course luminaries like abibula ji who join us in these conversations so well till we meet again with uh, another momentous uh, episode of the olympic story uh, this is me sudhi signing off and uh, wishing everyone all the best in terms of their health keep safe and please get that jab because that one doesn't really hurt <laughs>